because a lot of people did, in fact, choose to, or felt like they were forced to take the vaccine. Fine. Okay, what do we do to make sure we increase our odds so that it won't cause problems? You nailed it. We've got to take care of ourselves and begin to optimize the function of our bodies. There is something that's been very, very hard to treat in the medical world, and that's called PTSD, post-traumatic right. stress disorder. And all different kinds of drugs have been used, and it doesn't work. There are studies that are starting to come forward that say that a little THC may actually be helpful in these individuals. Let's talk about a new system. Well, they're bringing it on us, right? They've 90% of all the central banks globally, they're gonna come in with messaging like this is the amazing white knight on a shiny horse coming in to save the day, right? Well, no. The latest pandemic brought about this thing called the vaccine. We had a lot of calls to the office about, oh, I took the vaccine. Am I going to die? I took the vaccine. What should I do? My family member took the vaccine. How can I help them? Well, it's interesting because people weren't really thinking about vaccines too much as either a negative or positive until the last three years. Um, I think because there was such a push on this concept of mandate, you know, and again, I'm always been one free choice, man. You do what you want. You have to be informed of both sides of the coin. And then it's about a free choice. Like you get a choice to um, have a cheeseburger or you get a choice to have a salad. It's just what you do. You have a choice to walk in front of traffic or you choose not to. Um, but people do call about that concern and it's legitimate because there's so much media out here that are broadcasting on one side that you are going to die, you know, and that's the, that's the broadcast. And there's another side that said, you're going to be okay. And so that therein lies a big old confusion. People don't know what to do. All we can say is from our own experience in our own practice with the people that we personally dealt with, we haven't had someone die yet that we've known of directly because of taking one of the COVID vaccines. Well, the people, the patients, the individuals that actually come through the practice and work our processes mm -hmm. live in a completely different manner. So they foundationally, do. from a lifestyle standpoint, they're living an anti-inflammatory nutritional protocol, getting adequate exercise. They're moving blood, oxygen, and nutrients through their system. When we sweat, we detoxify. So we're eliminating, you know, deadly poisons, if you yeah. will. We're working on stress management and rest and then, you know, balancing hormones and even using, you know, certain healing peptides over the top of that and supplements to keep that foundation as strong as a person possibly can. Yeah, we've done a lot. And I think the, the question for everyone out there is, you know, the, the mRNA technology, what does that mean uh, long term? We don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows because time hasn't passed. Um, you know, I suppose in any technology, it doesn't matter. You go back to cell phones. I've heard people tell me that, you know, cell phones were the devil. In any technology, there's good and bad. You just got to figure out how to use it good. While some people have a bend towards using it bad. That's, that's life, you know. And so I think with this, it is important if you're out there and you have a question about this. Utilize the processes we just talked about with you. Work on your pathways. Make sure you get all your inflammatory markers down and under control. We have some unique tests that would look at things like your inflammation in the endothelium. For those of you going, what? There, that would be a sort of a, a test that would give you volatility towards increasing risk to throw clots or have a stroke. Right. So we can look at that kind of stuff and that gives people a sense of peace and we provide direction. We provide hope in that as opposed to uh, sort of a hopeless endeavor. Yeah. So if a person is living in an inflammatory manner and then they have compromised genetics, mm -hmm. they're the person that can do something about whether or not they may have a, a, a negative outcome from this. Exactly. Type and of a you take any vaccine, it doesn't matter what it is, its design is to 
trigger the immune system. The immune system's going to trigger inflammation. That's part of the adaptive response. That's supposed to happen. But you take any vaccine and throw it onto an already inflamed system, you're just compounding a problem that's there. And so it's hard to sit there and say, you know, this does that in everybody because we're all different. We all have different lifestyles we choose. And, and I think there needs to be a little bit more balance behind that. I'm not a fan, of course, of the speed of rollout of this technology at all. And I think that was, you know, not a good thing. In my opinion, I don't think people should have been forced to do that. But yet there's people that think differently and that's okay. But ultimately, we've got to be able to deal with this at this point because a lot of people did, in fact, choose to or felt like they were forced to take the vaccine. Fine. Okay, what do we do to make sure we increase our odds so that it won't cause problems? You nailed it. We've got to take care of ourselves and begin to optimize the function of our bodies. Um, we've been asked a lot of times, I mean, and this is a fair question, um, can you quote unquote, detox the spike protein. I've been asked that thousands of times, you know. The answer is, don't know. Just don't know. Can you simply detox the system? And if you can, uh, what are a couple ways people can do that? Yeah, I think that if you understand the detox system is a system that is driven by cellular function. Okay. So here's the cells. We've got to make sure we get the nutrients in the cells so the cells do what they do that form the detoxification and even the immune system. And that means eating well. That means exercising well. That means getting good sleep. That means controlling our uh, emotional response to life and not be stressed all the time. It means understanding genetics. It means use, utilizing peptides correctly, like we talked about. You know, there's a bunch of peptides that we can use. What and about it, Kingdom Fuel? Kingdom Fuel is amazing. I mean, it gives people good nutrition. I, I like Kingdom Fuel because it's, it's not it's expensive. Quality stuff. Five dollars or less per meal is amazing to ensure you're having the nutrients needed to drive your system. Um, we have got to take some action instead of just getting mad out here about whatever, you know. Many people make decisions, and then they have remorse for those decisions. Many people make decisions and have no remorse for these decisions. It is just about treating the body well. And whatever decision you made, live with the, con the, the consequences of it, but obviously improve the outcome by doing these things. Well, and people come in and they're just freaked out with, oh, so-and-so is going to die. I'm yeah. going to die. And I just go back to biblical principles. Those who drink deadly poisons, those who believe that they will not harm them. Yeah. So that's the first step in disarming that spirit of fear is totally. that this body is designed to heal. It is designed to be assaulted by the environment, and it is designed to overcome those things and adapt. I mean, we've adapted and changed a lot through the thousands of years that oh, we've been on the planet. We have, and that's Mark chapter 16, if you're wondering the scripture reference there. It is really important that people have hope. I can't tell you how many people, it's been, it's been hundreds and thousands of people that we've actually talked off the edge talked fear out of their life and put hope back in, prayed with them, cried with them. You know, uh, it, it's, it's a journey. We have got to get a proactive stance on this instead of being completely reactive all the time. Get your belief back. Get your hope back. Don't live in fear. Uh, if you're interested and need our help, uh, you can reach out to us. This is a hot topic, but we'd be honored to help you out. But look, it's going to be all right. There you go. There's some hope for you. And when you navigate through these, these economies with people, here's, here's what happens. We want to hold their hand through it, let them know when it's time to buy, sell, reallocate, get out of Dodge. Because a lot of times when you're struck with fear, fear does two things. Number one, it can paralyze and, and people just put their head in the sand and say, I'm just going to forget about it and hopefully it gets better. Or it causes you to make a wrong decision. And this is why we are here, is to help people navigate through the political quagmire nonsense that's going on, the economic malaise and the absolute 
collapse that we're seeing. And when our freedoms are eroding, our political freedoms, our economic freedoms, our personal freedoms, our religious freedoms, our health freedoms, they're all tied together. But you know what doesn't need to erode with that? Our finances. Kirk Elliott, PhD.com forward slash Sherwood. Hey friends, you already know the answer to this, but we'll ask you anyway. If you stay away from your favorite junk food for a month and then go back to supersizing it, will your health improve? Well, that's the thing about change. To change, we have to be as consistent as possible. And when we go back to an old habit, it's not the end of the world. We just get back at the new habit. Before you know it, real transformation is evident to you and others. That's why we offer a bunch of helpful bonuses when you subscribe to Kingdom Fuel. Kingdom Fuel is our complete nutritional meal shake. It's the simple start to a transformed life, and we'll auto ship every month so you don't run out. You'll receive two free shaker cups, free access to our video courses, and a monthly call with us filled with practical inspiration. Just see the link below or on your screen and subscribe today. The body's amazing at recovery, so you want to give it every chance, no matter what time it is. So in that context, no, it's certainly never too uh, late. You're never too old to start trying to be healthy. No matter where you are in terms of your health, that you can turn this around. It's never too late to start a wellness program, and it's never too late to reach your healthcare goals. I, there's an old adage, um, and I'm not sure where it came from, but I really do like it. And, they say um, the, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. We just want people to hang on to hope. We are hope dealers. And if you are not paying attention to the four foundational pillars of health, physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual, eventually it is gonna catch up. If we get all those four areas right, and we do it right, we see a dynamic occur in the middle called wellness, and that's where people uh, get better. Their health, is really going to return as a side effect of wellness. Marijuana is a really hot topic out there. It's used for a lot of different things medically. Is it necessary? Let's talk weed. No, <laughs> no the, the bottom line is it's on the ballot in a lot of states. It has been legalized. There are various levels of legalization. There's legalized medical marijuana. There's legalized recreational marijuana. Um, from the standpoint, just as a holistic thing, um, we need to be cautious with the recreational marijuana. That's just my opinion because anything that is neurotoxic – We've got to be cautious with that because people need to be able to critically think. And I've also seen people that have utilized legalized recreational marijuana sort of bottom out their neurotransmitters where they, they really uh, can become quite depressed or quite low in their mood. Well, now I will be the first to admit that I am not a marijuana expert and I don't do um, physical exams yeah. for uh, medical or clinical use, but I know that it has it has a lot of clinical uses, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the things I do know is that there are specific genes in the brain that have a specific sensitivity to this substance, where if a person gets a hit of it, they can become psychotic or can change their behavior very quickly. That is a great point. And there is. We do a ton of genetics. We actually test that one. And so, interesting enough, we've had a couple of cases. You know, we didn't didn't do the marijuana prescription, but we've well, had a couple was, of cases. It was, it was recreational. Yeah, it was recreational where a person did do that and then started walking out in front of cars trying to get hit because obviously that person most likely has that uh, SNP, single nucleotide polymorphism in their genes that actually causes – that receptor. Psychosis. Yeah, psychosis of marijuana. So you got to be careful about that. Um, but there is a patent. The United States government holds a patent for um, pain relief of marijuana, well, which, which is good. That is why researchers are studying marijuana more and more and more for the treatment of a number of conditions, especially 
pain. Yep. Uh, cancer pain is brutal. We know that a lot of times at end of life on cancer, people end up on morphine and heavy narcotics, which yep. actually create all kinds of crazy side effects like hallucinations or ants crawling on the skin, skin where marijuana doesn't seem to do that. No, I think that I'm a big supporter of, you know, palliative care, things like that, where people are, uh, you know, having difficult pain issues. I would be very supportive of that over things like chronic morphine, for example, right? Um, at the same time, we've, we've got to really understand that Everybody can be in pain from time to time. And so that can't become the thing that drives the prescription all the time. Because if it is, we're not getting behind the cause of the pain. Sometimes the cause of the pain is things that we need to do, things that we are doing or things that we could be doing. And we're actually the cause of it or some things that we don't know that we need to do to relieve the pain. We don't want to go towards just the remedy of turning off the noise of pain without talking about the cause of the pain and remediating the cause. So, you know, I mean, it's we're for it in a, in a sense, but we've got to be very cautious of it. Now, another thing that I've seen clinically is there are a lot of people that have chronic problems with insomnia and they've mm. gone to yep. uh, doctor after doctor and seek, sought medication after medication. And some of these medications actually have pretty significant side effects like walking in their sleep in the, oh. in the nighttime and eating in the nighttime and doing, doing crazy things. Whereas the marijuana prescription has actually helped chronic insomniacs finally get the sleep or the rest that they need without the side effects. Totally. Uh, it does produce uh, anti-anxiety. It can give you the munchies. That's just need to know that. I'm talking about THC or the tetrahydrocannabidiol. That's the thing. Now, there's also full spectrum hemp that has the cannabidiol in it, but doesn't have the level of neurotoxic THC. That also can be very good to be used for the same thing you're talking about for sleep. And many times it works just as good because it's both the THC and the full spectrum hemp are both, hemp are both anti-anxiolytic. They both are, except the full spectrum hemp doesn't create the munchies with it, right? So the munchies could create, you know, inappropriate weight gain, which is not a good thing. So, but people are using it to sleep and they are using it to, um, you know, kind of uh, tone the stress down of life. It's also, when you say the munchies, it has been used a lot in medical circles for the person who has cachectic weight loss from cancer right. or GI dysfunction. So it, it does help them uh, have an appetite. It does. And, and I had an experience with it from a whole different angle, uh, seizures, right? It has been used in children that have had epileptic seizures with some success. And I remember having a guy that I used to work with that had to, because it wasn't legal in our state at the time, had to pick up his family, move to another state so his daughter could have what she needed because it kept it under control. So there's, there's obviously something out there. It is a plant. Uh, you always have to watch too, folks, the, um, the way it's bred today, because there is a natural level of THC in the natural uh, growth of the crop, but you can actually genetically alter it to create more THC than probably it normally would have. Don't know the effects of that. And, and I suppose when you genetically alter something, it does and has unintended consequences. There is something that's been very, very hard to treat in the medical world, and that's called PTSD, post-traumatic right. stress disorder. And all different kinds of drugs have been used, including benzodiazepines, antidepressants, bipolar medications, et cetera, and otherwise, and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Even counseling, um, neurofeedback, just different um, brain retraining things don't work. And there are studies that are starting to come forward that say that a little THC may actually be helpful in these individuals. I, I totally agree. I'd rather somebody do a little THC in situations like that than um, live with that post-traumatic stress disorder and be addicted to sort of these hardcore narcotics. It's, it's just not good. I, I think that, um, and please understand folks, we, we are um, having this discussion with a little temperance and moderation of a balance here because I want you to to not rely on just PTSD. I got PTSD, so therefore I've got PTSD. Stop. Try to fix it on your own and correct it on your own. Do some things with clinician help to try to work through it before you gotta go down the pathway and just accept that you got it. Life is hard. 
And you're going to have stuff come at you. Some is your fault. Some is not. Some is traumatic. Some is not. But, you know, THC can be used as a benefit at times. Does it need to be a fallback all the time? I don't think so. So this is a huge discussion. Obviously, we just kind of touched the surface of it. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight to, uh, you know, where and how it can be used appropriately. Up next... Our financial guru, Kirk Elliott, gives us advice on what you need to know at this time in history. Let's get real. Most emergency food is just as bad for you as any other choice in the standard American diet. And that's just sad. We don't just need food. We need highly nutritional food. We don't just want to survive food shortages. We are meant to thrive in adversity. Complete your daily nutrition and have shelf-stable Kingdom Fuel as a cornerstone of your food supply. Don't sacrifice your health or your taste buds. Stock up on Kingdom Fuel now. Hello, I'm Kevin Sorbo. Now there's an old saying, it's not what you know, but who you know that matters. Now that's true in our careers, spiritual life, and when it comes to our health and overall well-being. Today, most of us know a lot of information about health and nutrition, but are we really doing anything with it? So here's what I've learned from working with doctors Michelle and Mark Sherwood. They're the founders of the Functional Medical Institute. You need a wellness plan that's customized based on your unique needs. Now remember, real change can only happen when you address the whole person. That is exactly what Mark and Michelle do and why they are people you should know. They'll help you discover what you need to experience transformation. Find out at Sherwood.tv slash Sorbo. That's Sherwood.tv slash Sorbo, or just see the link below. Have a great day, and God bless. I could use your assistance. Okay. Um, Jesus. Huh? I, my name is Jesus. <laughs> sure. Jesus. Jesus is here today. You, uh, you looking for a job? Yes, sir. You and Mark have 45 days before the bank forecloses. Not to worry. They do not call me by God buyer for nothing. The collection plate starts to be passed around. Mark reaches into the basket and shouts, you and your family are the winner from the first church of the Lotto. Kind of think of it like a high stakes bingo night. Ever this video of the diaper is going viral right before our eyes. This is a miracle. What, what is? is? Friends of Faith has over 300,000 followers. Oh my god! That's more followers than Moses had. Jesus! Take the wheel! Say no, no, take the wheel! I got it! I got it, buddy! Hey, Mark, it's great to be with you again. And um, we've all been talking about the globalists and their plans for a, a big global reset and what that means for, for a long time now. Well, starting on January 16th, for one week, they were all meeting the, the, the G7, the G20, the IMF, the World Economic Forum, um, all the big globalist policy leaders globally were meeting in Davos, Switzerland, like they do every single year. They had this confab, right? So what were they talking about, right? Well, before they even met, their notes came out, you know, the outline, this is what we're going to talk about to all you people that are here, right? All the, the globalists, and we've got Republicans and Democrats and politicians there. They're all meeting. And what are they talking about? What did they talk about, right? So according to the World Economic Forum website, these are the topics. And, and again, like I've said before, words have meaning, right? So let's listen to these words. They're, they're bullet points. They're going to address the current energy and food crisis in the context of a new system for energy, climate, and nature. They're going to address the current high inflation, low growth, high debt economy in the context of a new system for investment, trade, and infrastructure address the current industry headwinds in the context of a new system for harnessing frontier technologies for private sector innovation and resilience. They're going to address the current social vulnerabilities 
in the context of a new system for work, skills, and care. And they're going to address the current geopolitical risk in the context of a new system for dialogue and cooperation in a multipolar world. It's like, what's all this talk about a new system? Well, they're bringing it on us, right? They've 90% of all the central banks globally are now starting to issue central or going down the path of a central bank digital currency. Now, they're going to come in with messaging like this is the amazing white knight on a shiny horse coming in to save the day, right? Well, no, this is not what it's about. All that a central bank digital currency is, is cryptocurrency. It's a digital version of the paper money that they already print. However, so they can print just as many dollars as they want, right? Or as many yen or as many euro as they want. They can issue as many digital version of that currency as well because there's no tangible backing behind it. So it's going to do nothing to address the inflationary pressures. But here's the deal, Mark, for you know the old saying, never let a good crisis go to waste. Okay, nobody would want a system where your digital social profile, what you spend money on, what your religion is, who you donate to, what church you give to, what political party you give to, how you spend your money, have you been vaxxed or not vaxxed, right? All of this is part of our digital social profile. And if they don't like it, because it's programmable money, they have the authority to shut off your ability to buy or sell. This is what a digital social profile attached to a central bank digital currency does. So when they're talking about a new system, this is the system they're talking about. How do I know that it's not some other system? Because further on in their notes, they talk about how this is going to be a new normal, how they have to talk about a global coalition for digital safety, because there's big efforts that we need to tackle here. They need to talk about applying human rights to the digital world. Why? Because they know that their system is going to strip away our privacy, our freedom, and our rights. And so they need to talk about how are we going to tackle this when we're going to have a ton of opposition from stripping people of their freedom and their privacy completely. So this is what's going on politically. And all of our investments, Mark, are we are a combination of some puzzle pieces. The political puzzle piece, the economic puzzle piece, the social puzzle piece, right? They all get put together. And this is what I do and what we do at our firm is put those puzzle pieces together and strategically put together a system to get out of the path of this hurricane and safely reallocate to get out of the system where you're not just a digital number where your programmable money can shut you off from buying or selling, right? So how do you do that? With tangible assets like gold and silver that not only have we talked about in the past how they're great investments, I mean, they're they're booming, but they're also in this respect, um, also instrumental in protecting your religious freedom, your personal freedom, your political freedom, your economic freedom, your health freedom, because it's private, they're private transactions. So, so call our office. You know, Mark, you and I talk a lot about this and, and every one of the viewers should give us a call because we can strategically map out. It's a free consultation, your strategy for success so you can thrive. And all you have to do is go to kirkelliotphd.com forward slash Sherwood, or you can just give our office a call 720-605-3900 and say, Dr. Mark sent you. Exploring biohacking, bioharmonizing, biosynergizing, stacking, resilience, or anti-fragility? Start here. No gimmicks, just proven results. 